Good morning, ladies. Good morning. I thought this morning I would give you a seven cleansers I use for all of you who are not in England and it's night time you must look at me thinking I'm Gaga I thought last night when I went to sleep it would be nice if I gave you my seven top cleansers and that we started this off as a bit of a routine so that's what I'm doing this morning I'm gonna start let me put my hair up and I'm gonna take you through oh thank you lady for waking up with me or oh, thank you for whatever you are because because I just can't think. I need you to think for me. Um, and I'm going to do them in the order of how I discovered them. Because I just thought that was an interesting way to do them. So my first ever cleanser that I got totally addicted to was Eve Lom Cleansing Balm. I hope it's the right way around. And Eve Lom was a lady that I met in the 80s. And she was already then quite established in England. she came over from the States and she, I had very bad problem skin and I went to see her because somebody else said, you must see this woman. It took me months to get an appointment and she um, started this routine on me. The gunk is a green gunk, there it is. And it's got in it a lot of fantastic things. It's got clove oil, eucalyptus oil, hope oil. It's got, um, I think it's based in cocoa butter, but it has an amazing consistency. And Eve Lom was the first woman to do a beauty balm. And before then we really used milk cleansers. So this was such a, such a different concept that you would get something and it would melt like butter and, and I remember when she told me how first to use it, she said, you know, do, kind of literally do this in your hands like you might with an essential oil and go in. And she believed so much in lymphatic drainage. And in fact, in later life, uh, when Eve had been around for many, many years, and even when she'd sort of sold a part of her business to Space NK, she really got into a cranial osteoth osteopathy and whenever I went to have a facial with her she would spend 45 minutes working around this area and less time on my face and I would leave and I would just look so like all all my tension had come away from my face and that was her key she would say and she still I think it still has it today in the packaging that when you're cleansing with her routine you're having a product that has such a good consistency for you to really lymphatically drain your face and go through each lymphatic area and wake up your face. So that's her way of doing it, okay? And then she would say, take a hot muslin cloth and I only have hot, oh, I have one of her muslin cloths. So it's sold with a hot muslin cloth like this, which in fact is the same thing I use for Lila as her sort of juju, which she sucked at night, you know, baby's thing. So that's, that's what it is. And then after you've done your, after you've done your sort of lymphatic drainage, uh, I would then take a hot cloth and my skin is gonna be so clean after this because I'm gonna do so many cleansers. Um, and I've got Chloe to get up early, by the way. She's sitting there in the back very sweetly in case you have questions because at this time in the morning, I really can't see without my glasses. So Chloe, if there are any. Yeah, they're just seeing where they're looking, uh, uh, where they're looking from. Yeah. Well, where are you looking from? I'm interested to know where you are. So tell me. Cyprus. Cyprus, my God. Cyprus, you should be up and about in glorious sunshine now. I see some blue sky poking through. Thank God for that. Now, in my new place that I live, it takes a long time for the hot water to heat up. So, with Eve Lom, you've really got to um, put this hot flannel on your face. And so I'm waiting for really hot water to be able to do that. Where's your robe from? Oh, my robe. You all ask about my robes, ladies. This robe I got in India, and it's a store called Anuki. I've been looking in the UK for who might make who might make these or stock them actually. In France, there's a shop in Paris called Salome or Salome, and they stock them for a very expensive amount. When I bought it in India, it was 15 pounds. And it's called, if you find it, kimoni do, uh, uh, Anuki do dressing gowns, but it's called their Anuki kimono. Okay, and it's a unisex kimono. I have hot water. Okay, so, taking my hot flannel, I remember she did this so well when I had the facial with her, 
you go over and you press it in and you release those essential oils. This is a very, very good um, cleanser, surprisingly for oily skin, because the eucalyptus and the clove do a lot of things to detoxify your skin. You take it off like that and you do it again. So that's my first woman. I, that's the first time I ever used a non-cream cleanser. She's still good today. She did sell her entire company to Space NK, and as a result, the ingredients changed a tiny bit. But the fundamental, the smell there, the kind of way it leaves your skin nicely plump, but when I had really bad acne, I didn't feel there was any grease going onto my skin. I still felt the cloves and the eucalyptus were draining away my, my bad skin. All right, my next baby is Dr. Hauschka. Now, is it the right way up, Chloe? I mean, can you read it? Can you read it? I can't really read it because it's too, it's too whiting. What if I close the door for a second? Let me just see if that makes a difference. There. Does that make a difference? Okay. I close the door. Does that help? Uh, not really. Not really. Well, I like to have Chloe closer to me, so I'll keep that there. Um, okay, Dr. Hauschka, um, you need to have a slightly damp skin to put this on. And so I'm just dampening, just a little dampening of my skin. And Dr. Hauschka started long time ago in Germany and it was started by a man who started a botanical company. Um, and he did sort of more, he didn't get into skincare in, in the, until this woman who was called Elizabeth something, Elizabeth Sigmund um, in the late 60s. Uh, decided that she would love to use his approach, which was this thing called Walla, which is, I um, can't remember, something to do with ash and putting it in the ground and bringing it up again. But, but she was really ahead of her time in t being the first truly commercial botanical company. And they haven't changed ingredients since. They are the company, and I say this a lot, that they want their, um, their employees when they go out and pick all the herbs and all of the botanics that go into making Dr. Hashka products, they want them to be in a good mood. So when, when those things are picked in the same fields that they've been picked in for 60 years, isn't that fantastic? Um, that they have a sort of good energy going into them. They use fantastic ingredients, and this has in it um, calendula, which is a wonderfully healing property. Calendula cream you can sometimes get in a pharmacy and it's kind of when you've got an inflammation. Um, chamomile, St. John's wort, anthrolus, and then sweet almond is the thing that's actually going into your skin. And I was always told the technique of Dr. Hauschka is not to rub this exfoliator in. So instead of you seeing me obsessively, compulsively rubbing my skin, You'd be pleasantly surprised to know that you pat it in and you feel those active ingredients working. And in a similar way to Yves Lorme, you know, when you go and have a Dr. Hauschka facial, they are doing a real lymphatic drainage on your face. Um, so you just press in how much time you've got. Usually I do this one at night. And actually, do I do this one? I do do this one in the morning. I don't usually do this one if I already have makeup on. This is the one I do when I wake up in the morning, when I have time. Um, whereas the Yves Lom, I would use to take off my makeup as well. But I can see my skin waking up, waking up, waking up. Elisa is asking, would you normally use multiple cleansers? A multiple cleanser? What do you mean by that? I think, um, would I use a cleanser and toner in one? I'd say this Dr. Hauschka cleansing cream is going to leave my skin toned so I would, in a way, consider this cleansing and toning my skin. Although they have a wonderful facial toner, Dr. Hauschka, which is just distilled, different types of distilled rose and other waters. And it really is, is, leaves your skin with your pores closed and kind of fresh, not too dried out, because everything has a little bit of oil in it. So I'm going to take then my... Eve Long cloth actually, and I take it off this because it's a bit, you know, stuff everywhere all over your face. I find it easier to take it off 
with a cloth than I would washing it off because I'll feel I'll get everything off. Oh, my skin is going to be really unbelievable. Okay, so that's two. Now let's go on to some newer babies. What's my next newer baby? Yes, okay. There's a few people out there in a space and they see the fame and they see the excitement of a trend of cleansing balms and they get on that bandwagon. And two people who did that after Eve Lom were Sarah Chapman and Liz Earle, okay? Um, one, let's start with, oof, let's start with Sarah Chapman because it's kind of similar. She calls it the ultimate cleanse. And I do actually use this, and I think I use this, even though I'm so loyal to Eve Lom, and because I knew her, I really loved her, and I kind of thought, is Sarah Chapman copying? But Sarah Chapman doesn't come out of a natural beautician space. She worked in a plastic surgeon's office. I think she worked in Harrods, and um, she was somebody more behind the counter, seeing what was selling, what was doing well, and that is as important, really, as a beautician who's working on somebody's skin. And because she worked with a plastic surgeon, she saw a lot of different skin conditions and things happening. So she kind of created this cleanser, I think, just because she wanted to do a range that she felt sat in between sort of botanical and skin skinceutical. Um, so using sort of the science of the modern age, but still keeping to those kind of principles. So in it, let me just see what she's got in it. Um, I don't know if I wrote down what she's got in it. I mean, there isn't much on her side of what's actually in it, but I'm going to just show you the similarity to Miss Long. Um, it's easier to put in your hands, okay? It really, it's sort of more liquidy um, and it's got a bit of vitamin A in it, it deeply cleans it, but it's a sort of, it's a less rich consistency than Eve Lom. It's got an easier consistency to apply. Um, you can kind of rub around. And then with this, actually, you know what I use? I'll show you what I use. I use my little friend, I use my Formio, because, because I perhaps haven't grown up with this one, with somebody telling me how to use it. I've developed my own way to use it. So. It works well with the Formio. And the Formio is this little machine I, I use in many of my routines. And the, what I like about it is it's got, I'm gonna turn it off a second. It's got silicone, oh, it won't turn off. <laughs> it's made of all silicone. So there's nothing gonna get in there. There's no dirt that's gonna get in there and become bacterial because it's one unit. It was made in one mold and the Clarisonic which is the brush that whistles around, which a lot of people use as a mechanism to clean their face. I used for a little bit, but I found that um, unless I knew I was putting it in boiling water, I didn't really know how clean it was going to be. And I felt after a while that maybe some bacteria was um, staying as a deposit in the back of those bristles. So since I've been using this, I felt much better. And I sometimes push up my cheekbones when I use this. There's no harm in making your cheekbone, <laughs> your cheekbones go back to where they used to live because as we, as we age, our cheekbones drag down. And then I do this in the morning too, actually. I kind of get the extra, you know, we sometimes have a, a little extra skin here above the eye. So I do this, this is just my own weird routine, but the vibration of this machine, I feel, helps to tighten my skin and it sort of wakes me up it's a ritualistic thing i'll normally do this sitting on the loo seat so i'll just be um i don't usually do one thing at once um there we go and then i do a figure of eight here with this figure of eight figure of eight figure of eight figure of eight and then i'll go underneath and i'll draw up on my cheekbone and then I'll go the other side and draw up my cheekbone. <laughs> and then lift the cheekbone, lift the cheekbone, lift the cheekbone, lift the cheekbone, okay? All right, and then I take that off because it's a bit sticky. I actually take that off with a hot flannel, okay? All right. Here we go, I'm nearly done. I'm nearly done, have I got? The washcloth was from. The washcloth? 
When you buy Yves L'Homme, you get a muslin washcloth. So that's where it comes from. And I collect them over the years. I must have collected about a hundred by now. Um, so you see my skin is getting very clean. Um, I'm now going to go on to... I'm going to go on to um, Liz Earle. Okay, so Liz Earle um, started in the Isle of Wight. When did she start, Liz Earle? A while ago. And this is the Gentle Face Exfoliator. So this is going on to a more sort of slightly exfoliating type of cleanser. I do use this if I've got makeup on um, because I feel it can sort of take everything off. And... It's got on it, what I always smell most on it is camphor, or you, oh, what is it, eucalyptus, that's nice smell, eucalyptus, I'm just trying to see if there's any eucalyptus in the ingredients, um, and it's based in a cocoa butter, but you don't, you feel more the tingling of the eucalyptus than anything else, um, and rosemary, I think I can smell, rosmarinus, yes, rosemary, you can smell rosemary in it, hop again like in um, the next one I'm going to do, it's got a little bit of granule, granule you can see here. So the the jojoba beads making making that gentle exfoliation. And because it's sort of in this um, white cream, it's not such an abrasive exfoliator. So the word gentle in front of it is true and correct. So I usually just exfoliate away. I'll do a little bit of any of you who have scarring from acne any of you watching, this is a very good one actually, because it's a little bit medicinal. And I always do the extra exfoliation around where I used to have my acne scars, because of once a plastic surgeon said to me when I was considering having some big laser to um, take away my scarring, he said, there is nothing better than really, really quite aggressively exfoliating around the area of scarring. Some of you get nervous when I exfoliate here and rub around a lot, which I just do and my skin's okay for it, but some, I appreciate some skins are much thinner. But where I've got scarring, I have no hesitation in going really rather vigorously. Okay, there we go. And there we go. All right, and I'll probably take this off also with a hot cloth because if I just wash it off, I'll leave a little bit of, um, it would just, there'll be a little bit left, which I don't like. Okay, all right. And then we just go, you know what, I can't, I apologise if I keep looking to the right because I turned my camera the wrong way around and you're there. <laughs> Hi. Um, oh, any questions, Jenny? Mm. All right. Next up, a second to last. No, my God, how many more have I got? I've got seven, haven't I? I'm going to speed it up now. Julia Hunter. Um, Julia, Julia Hunter Maximal Strength Cleanser. I use this every day. It's a liquid cleanser like this. All right, there we go. And Julia Hunter is the woman I'm quite obsessed with because I do an evening routine with her religiously. And this cleanser, paraben free, fragrance free, everything free, sulfate free, but it has incredibly good ingredients. It deeply cleans. It's very good to clean oily acne pores without drying it. It doesn't strip your protective layers away. It cleans your skin so well that afterwards, when you put on her peel at night, your skin couldn't be cleaner. And I do rub it in with the Formio, like that. Okay, but she, this is, this is my go-to cleanser probably once a day. I do clean my skin two times a day, sometimes three times a day, because if I'm doing a video, I'll have a rigorous cleanse um, after if I'm doing a lot of makeup testing or before if I'm doing some um, skin products. So I'm gonna put that one away. I will take this off with water, just out the tap and without a flannel. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay. Okay, there we go. I hope you're gonna have a good weekend, ladies. I'm rather happy. It's a Friday. I've had a very long week and I'm quite happy it's Friday. How many of you feel, good it's a Friday? Good it's a Friday. Okay, my last two are very, very similar and they've got very similar ingredients and they're very different prices. So I didn't say any of the prices for these, um, but I will put them up today on the site. So Indeed Labs is from Boots. I get it from Boots and it's a part of the Ordinary Company. And this is called just their exfoliator. 
Um, it is a powder like that. And as you put it on with a tiny bit of water, so it's slightly technical, it, it rubs into a paste and you can either have it quite dry as a paste or you can put more water on it, which I'll show you. And it will sort of foam up more. Have it out there we go. It's got bamboo extract in it um, and it's very finely milled. And that's the, that is what's giving you the exfoliation with the rice bran powder. It has bromelain in it, which is an enzyme and it's in pineapples. So it's giving you a sort of enzyme cleanse as well as giving you an exfoliation cleanse. And I quite like a cleanser. If you have a skin that can take a bit of action, this is really cleaning your face. This is actually one of, one of my favorite cleansers too. They're all, these seven are all my hearty favorites. I use them endlessly. I must have used them in Deed Labs only for the last six months, but the other ones and Rodin for the last three months and the rest I've used for years and years and years. Um, and it's sort of, this is the one that helps get rid of all dead skin cells because it's got very active ingredients to do that. Um, and I like it, it's good. It's good, you can do it thick or you can do it thin and it really cleans the skin. I take this one off with water as well. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm gonna end with my newest cleanser. I've actually done them in the routine. It's so ironic, I've done them in the routine in which I, they've kept, come into my life. But my newest cleanser is Rodin. Let me put it in the middle there. And Linda Roden is a wonderful New York woman. She tells you to pat your face first. And she's, I can't believe how you really thought I did seven cleansers at one. I don't know what that says about me or my relationship with all of you. Um, like this, like the other one, the powder. And she um, was this cool New York stylist, really, really stylish woman. She has gray hair, but she looks fantastic with gray hair. Oh, she's a bright red lip and she wanted some basic routine to do. She was a real minimalist because she spent all the day around sort of models and people doing hair and makeup and faffing. And in about 2007, I think, she started this oil, Olio Lasso. Is it, how do you say luxury oil? Olio Lasso. Olio di Luso. Olio di Luso would be the way you'd say it in Italian. But for her, she thought that would sound like aqua di palma. So she did olio lusso, which is just luxury oil. And you can smell all these oils. So she got these together in her bathroom and, and put together 12 wonderful essential oils and she made this oil. I don't know if I have it here. And then from that, this year or last year, I'm always behind the time, she did this cleanser and it got in it some of those oils. I want to say, see if I can find what the oils are. Jasmine Neroli, that's it. It's such the most, it's the most beautiful smell. If you want to wake up in the morning with a wonderful smell around you and just go and inhale as you clean your skin, couldn't get better than this. So she, um, she believes, I haven't got my vintner's daughter yet, but she believes that you, um, after you've cleansed, you, um, oh, there we go. You don't totally dry your face. Okay, so I'm just going to, Loosely pat, very loosely pat. I'm trying to blow my nose at the same time with the towel, sorry. sorry. And I'm going to take a facial oil. Um, I'm just gonna do Julique because I don't have hers, which is really tragic, but, because um, it smells so good. Do I really not have it here? No, I don't. Um, and I'm just gonna end with my slightly damp skin and putting an oil into my slightly damp skin. You might find this is weird, but I'm trying this and I like the idea because what it's doing is you're mixing the water with the oil and you won't have such an oily skin afterwards. It would just kind of be slightly matter, but it still gives you the ability to have delicious oil. So if I had done this ladies, just one, one cleanser, I would have been done in two minutes. But I wanted to show you my secret seven, and I thought I would start with cleansers and we'll move on. We'll do moisturizers and then we'll do foundations and then we'll do concealers. Tell me what you would like of my secret seven. And a really good day, ladies. Thank you for watching and we'll be in touch soon.